Hey guys, it's Randall Bacon from Valley PBS, and you might be wondering, Randall, why are you in a field in the middle of nowhere? Well, that's a great question. In this episode of Valley PBS Spotlight, I'm going to be going to one of the most historic places in the Central Valley, and one of the most interesting, in my opinion. Um, and that place is Colonel Allensworth State Park. I heard this was one of the first all-black towns in California, so I'm excited to see what I can learn about it, and I hope you are too. Let's go. Just to give a little backstory, Allensworth was a town in Erlemart, California, a place in Tulare County, established all the way back in 1908 by a group of men led by this man, Lieutenant Colonel Allen Allensworth, the highest ranking black officer in the U.S. Army at the time. It was the dream of Allensworth and these men to create a town free of oppression, racism, and discrimination, where black residents were free to own property, learn, thrive, and live the American dream. When I chose to make this trip to Allensworth, I knew that the fascinating origins and intent of this town would be enough to capture my attention. But since me and my family decided to camp as well, what we encountered upon arrival was something that caught me completely off guard. All right, so we just made it to Allensworth. Uh, we can't wait to get around and explore. We just saw a hawk in a tree. Pretty sure she's sitting there watching us. So I'm gonna be honest, we came here for the town, but so far it's the wildlife that's really capturing our attention. First the hawk and now a pack of coyotes and this endless sound of chirping birds. What more could you ask for? Maybe silence? Our trip was far from over. On day two, I headed into town, searching for what makes this town so special. To my welcome surprise, it didn't take long at all for me to connect the pieces and better understand this compelling town. So I don't know what I expected coming to Ellensworth, but this town really pulls you in. And there's so much history and so much to unravel here. Each building has meaning and it's, it's beautiful. At each house, you have these stops that tell you exactly what's going on and then a phone number that you can dial in and actually get an explanation of what the building was. And that is so cool. I wasn't expecting that. We saw so many interesting houses like the Dickerson Library, which was first used as a school after it was purchased in 1913 by Miss Josephine Allensworth. Eventually, it was converted to be used as a branch of the Tulare County Library System. Some other awesome places we saw were the Milliner Barbershop, the original home of Colonel Allensworth himself, and the Scott Gross Store, a community store established by Mrs. Mary Gross in 1911. While this building served as a store, the back section was used as a home by Gross and her family. While exploring, I quickly learned that in the town of Allensworth, every piece of property and every home played a part in keeping this community afloat. It was apparent that in terms of needs, there was a place for everything and everything had its place. With such willing and able citizens, I began to ask myself, why wasn't this persistent town more successful? Why didn't this virtuous dream last? I found the answer to my question upon arriving at one of my last stops, the old railway car at the front entrance of the park. It was here that I learned a piece of information that would change how I saw the town. To my surprise, the town of Allensworth was successful. According to the informational panel, the placement of Allensworth was no coincidence and was actually located near the railroad. This brought an impressive amount of business to the town. At its height, Allensworth was consistently conducting four to $5,000 worth of business every month thanks to the railroad system. To put that into perspective, that would be about $146,000 in today's money. Sadly, after the adjacent town of Alpaw was built in 1914, the Santa Fe Railroad Company began to divert their trains away from Allensworth and to Alpa in an act of defiance against the thriving all-black town. Though the citizens of Allensworth protested, people began to neglect Allensworth 
and move their business to the opposite town. In just 15 years, the amount of business conducted in Allensworth monthly dropped to $13.61, or around $400 in today's money. Eventually, in 1930, the train station which once brought business to the town officially shut down. When I planned my trip to Allensworth, I knew that admiring the architecture of these homes alone would have made the trip worth it. But I must say, I was not ready for the emotion that came along with the tragic and captivating story of this place. I was genuinely moved. There was a calmness here, a peace that could be felt in every home, in every motionless blade of grass. The longer I stayed and learned about the town, the more I came to see the significance of Colonel Allensworth's dream. There was no doubt to me that this land represented freedom, equality, love, and acceptance. Walking through this town and capturing its beauty was an experience unlike any other. The homes, the stores, the schoolhouses, they all seemed to speak to me, reminding me that although the town is no more, the dream of Colonel Allensworth is still very much alive. I will always cherish the time I spent here. The camping, the wildlife, the history. It was all a breath of fresh air. There are no words to describe how grateful I am to Allensworth State Park for opening my eyes to the dream of Colonel Allensworth. A dream that lives on. A dream that will never be forgotten. <laughs>